All right, so now you should have a deeper understanding of how all this stuff is like kind of working together. Um, so I'm just gonna really explain the process as a whole and then we'll actually start to get it going. Now, we talked a little bit about installed apps and URLs in the last one. This is where a lot of the magic is gonna happen for your project. So with installed apps, installed apps are allowing us to run certain functions or something that we want. For example, if we wanted an app that had, or if we wanted to put products into our project, right? So a list of products, which we would wanna do because we're making an e-commerce. We would make an app completely for products, right? So, and then if we wanted to have a way for, um, to track orders, we'd wanna have an app completely for tracking orders. Okay, so that would be, just think of apps in that terms. Not Like anything that you wanted to function, use that app. Now, if you had products and then you wanted to have something more advanced like like product suggestions, and let's say for instance, product suggestions had all this detail and a lot of stuff in it, you would separate those two apps. You would wanna separate them because realistically, apps should be really good at one thing. Right, so like the Django admin is really good at just the Django admin. It do, it's not good at doing authentication. That's not really what it's for. That's what the auth um, is for. And that's also like creating a user and checking their passwords and doing all that stuff. That's what that's really good for. Now the admin works with the auth and it will work with your apps too, but just keep in mind that whenever you create an app, you wanna separate it. There's really no reason to put it all together other than you might want, you just might want to because it saves you like a lot of time writing, uh, making a new app and separating things, and blah, blah, blah. But down the line, if you keep them separate, it's just going to be so much easier uh, to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, so just keep that in mind. We will create a project app in just a second. Now, our apps also are create or work with our URLs. So, like our app will have the ability, it'll have a file called views, and then we will make functions to handle our views. And um, those views are what's gonna relate directly to any given URL. So instead of talking about it anymore, let's actually start doing it. All right, now, f when we create an app, we'll do python manage.py, and you do start app, and whatever the app name you wanna call it. In this case, I'm gonna call it products and I'm using plural instead of singular, right? So I'm not calling it product, I'm calling it products because it's really gonna encompass all of our products, right? That's what it's all about. So we're gonna call it that, I press enter, and right away you should see in your project that products comes up. So we have that init file again, notice it's empty again. Uh, we have an admin file, we have models, we have tests, and we have views. All right, so admin will just register our apps into um, the admin, the Django admin, which we've already seen, which was here, right? Uh, models is how we're gonna actually store our data, our data into the database. Views will be how our URLs will interact with this particular app. So let's actually make a, our first view. We're gonna make one called define, we'll just say it's home, and it's gonna take in a request. So it's taking in a, a uh, HTTP request. So whenever one, someone clicks on a button uh, that goes to a web page, it sends a request. And that request will be handled by this function. And all we're gonna do is return render, and it's gonna return the request, and then it's some template file here and then some context. For now, I'm gonna use context equals to locals. We'll get into context more later, but just do this for now. Uh, all that's doing is making all of the, th all of, um, the variables in home um, available in the template. And then template, we wanna set to being, I'll set to being home.html, okay? Uh, you might be like, well, I don't think we made home.html. We haven't made it yet, but that's what we're gonna set it as. And locals is just a function that allows us to use just general context. You can also just use an empty dictionary here too. Um, that's okay as well, but I'm just gonna use locals for now. All right, so um, now that we have this, we can go into our URLs and I already noticed that there's one that's in here that's called home. 
and it doesn't have blog or admin, it just has a dollar sign. So that's a regular expression for those of you who wanna know. Uh, let's uncomment this out and let's actually look at this and go, okay, e-commerce, what's e-commerce? Well, it's not gonna be the Django project folder. It will be any folder within Django project. So you can just kind of ignore that name and look below. So it's gonna be either it's gonna be either e-commerce, e-commerce here or prod products here. And in this case, it's gonna be e-commerce, this configuration folder. And it's gonna look for a file called views, which it does not have. So if it had a file called views, it would look in there for home, but it doesn't. So let's actually save this and, and check out what I mean. Now, if we go to the home page, oh, we need to make sure our server is running. So Python manage.py run server. All right, and we refresh in here. It says view does not exist at. Could not import commerce ecommerce.views.home. Parent module ecommerce views does not exist. That's just saying that views as a file does not exist in e-commerce. And that is expected. We don't see it here. But where does it, a views file exist? Well, if we click down on products, ah, views. And even better, in that views file, we have a function called home. So this will actually work. So views.home, views.home, right? So let's change this to products, right? So products, the app name, views, the file name, home, the function name, and we save it. Don't worry about this yet, but that's a URL name that comes in handy later. All right, so we save it and we let's go back into Chrome and do a refresh. Uh-oh, template does not exist. That's a good error to find. Um, and we will fix that in just a moment. Let's change it to views.abc. Refresh. All right, so now it's saying view does not exist in module products.views. Where before, if we did e-commerce, it's going to say that the parent module does not exist. Right. So that's saying views doesn't exist. Where if we change it back to products and do a refresh, it's now saying view does not exist, right? So it's basically saying ABC, the function does not ex actually exist in views because it doesn't. So if we change this to ABC, then it's gonna give us a different error. Home does not exist. So home template home does not exist. Cool, that's pretty good. That's actually what we wanna see. All right, so there's a few ways to do template files. Um, I'm gonna do a easier way for you at this point and in our products folder or products app we can add a new folder in here called templates and within templates we're going to add a new file so click on templates and add a new file save it right away and within templates we are going to save as home.html save that all right so i can kind of up and down that there do a refresh and ah, template still does not exist. So what is it that's going on here? Well, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that it says Django.template.loaders.filesystem.loader. It's looking in there, but then it's also looking in app directories.loader. Um, well, it's not in either one of those. So how do we actually make this work? Well, we go into our settings and in installed apps, we can just add our products app in there. Products, save it, go back into template does not exist and we'll just do a refresh. Ah, now it's just an empty page. And if I do H1, hello, there it is. It is now working and what it's looking for here is it's actually looking in the app. So if I change this to home two in the view, if I change the view that's rendering the template to home two, it says template does not exist. So now we can actually scroll down and say, okay, it's looking in file system. There's nothing in file system, so it's empty. And then it's looking in template.loaders.appdirectories.loader. And we see in here, oh, okay, there's home two right there. Hmm. Uh, or it's looking in products slash templates home two. Now this is something that's built into Django where you can just have a folder within um, any app and have the related files to that app. Now this is an okay method to do it. I prefer actually putting 
the all of the template files in one spot, so it's separate. But something to notice about template files is it ends with .html. So that means it's just regular HTML text. And we are allowed to do other smart things to it, but it's still just HTML. So if you're working with somebody who's a designer that knows HTML, they can just know HTML and know a few other things and will be able to design the way the site works much better for you than the way it functions. So versus, you know, here we're, we're going to be doing the way it functions and the web designer can make the HTML look really nice. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going to leave off now. In the next one, we're going to do a little bit more with the templates and uh, just kind of discuss also context for these templates so we can make smarter templates. Um, so we'll see you in the next one.